Welcome to another video. I've got a problem with my Subaru that I found yesterday and I thought I'd share it with you and how, to my way of thinking, it's possibly responsible and in the bigger picture for a lot, a lot, maybe the majority of Subaru engines going bang, disintegrating, blowing up, seizing, whatever you want to call it, beyond economical repair. So the problem I've found with my engine is that the radiator is potentially leaking. Now I've had Subarus for 20, 25 years now and probably replaced four radiators in all the different Subarus I've had, Outbacks, Foresters, Legacies, and uh, they've all needed the radiator re to be replaced at around the 10 to 12 year mark. Now admittedly I live in Australia where the temperatures are get up to 40 45 so it's pretty hot in australia and thereby the plastic in the radiator seems to deteriorate fairly quickly over here but i'm guessing around the world probably radiators and subarus especially the plastic in them deteriorating to the extent they start leaking and the owners don't know is very high on the reasons why engines and subarus go bang and need replacing so I'll just run you through what I've found and how I intend to go about fixing it. What I'm not going to do in this video is show you how to replace a radiator. There's plenty of videos online about that. This video is really about making you aware of what happens when the radiators do leak, if you don't catch it in time, and how much it could cost you. Potentially it could cost you your car if it's an older Subaru. So I found my radiator level the other day less than half full the radiator the um, overflow bottle was empty and the radiator took probably two liters of coolant to fill it back up so i'll show you what i found so as you can see the coolant leak has started i've only just taken a drive for 10 k's just down to the beach and i'll come back and you can see there's coolant here there's coolant splattered over here. There's coolant down the bottom. There's coolant on the side of the battery case, but there's no coolant coming out from underneath the radiator cap. And there doesn't seem to be any coolant flowing down the side of this overflow bottle. So I think there's a good chance that possibly this radiator, maybe in the corner here, I'm not too sure, has formed a leak of some description. And uh, we're just about to find out. So one of the first things you want to do if you want to find a leak is to just make sure you clean all the residual old fluid off first. You're never going to be able to find a leak if you leave this fluid it's still there. Luckily the colour of this coolant is green so it's easy to find. Hey, so I've got my friend over here, John, and he's just about to um, pressurise this radiator. Hopefully we'll find out where the leak is. It's a simple little piece of test equipment he's got here. So it's a false radiator cap. Snaps onto a little fitting. And oh She's dear, gone. where did that come from? Holy shit. Do that again. Oh, 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 there it is there. Right there. Right at the... Yep, she's cracked. Cracked tank right there, Stewie, like you say. Right there. Look. Oh, dear. Oh, well, that didn't pressurise much, and it's gone. Thanks, John. So here's a quick, quick little um, video of the tool that we used to pressurise the radiator to find this leak. It, um, it's got a radiator cap there the kit's got universal radiator caps i think this is a toledo kit but i'm not too sure but anyway it's a little hand pump just here the hand pump pressurizes this gauge and the other end's got a quick disconnect fitting that goes onto the radiator cap the dummy radiator cap so you can pressurize your radiator and find leaks like we just did so just as a comparison i thought i'd show you the old outback that i have here and if we jump inside and have a look at the instrument cluster, we'll see in the good old days, Subaru had a water temperature gauge. Off, 
So the Outback I just showed you is a 2007 Outback with a water temperature gauge. Now in a Forester 2012, this is what you get. You get a red water temperature gauge and a blue water temperature gauge. Which is not very helpful because the blue one tells you that your engine's warmed up and it's up to temperature and then it goes out and the red one comes on when your engine's about to blow up. So in summary, you've seen firsthand the problem that I've got now is I need a radiator. Luckily I managed to find one online for 200 bucks and I'm quite happy buying the cheap, I don't know where they're made, but the cheap radiators online. I've got one in that outback just there and that's been going for five years now. I think it cost me 200 bucks. And the one that I've just found online, I'll screenshot it and put it on this video. That's about $210 delivered. It's an easy one for me to change. This is a manual. Um, that's just a point too. If you are gonna buy yourself a new radiator and do it yourself at home, make sure you get the auto or the manual radiator. The auto one's got the cooling inlet and outlet at the bottom of it, and the manual one doesn't. So they are different radiators. So just make sure that you do a good background check and make sure you've got the right radiator for the model vehicle that you have. But um, in summary, I just think if you've got a Subaru that's 10 to 12 years old, I'd be thinking about replacing the radiator or at least getting it pressure checked like I just have. Um, chances are you'll be out there with your kids, you'll be on a summer vacation somewhere in the mountains driving your Subaru around and your radiator lets go. Nobody wants that. So I hope this video has been informative and uh, helps you make good decisions about maintenance on your Subaru. Cheers.